Hello there. March 7th. Welcome. Derabit Live. Got a good show. <laughs> a lot of people might be a little bit shell-shocked from this week. But uh, hopefully everyone survived okay. And in fact, that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. So as we wait for more people to come in, uh, hey, everyone, uh, uh, nice to see you. I see lots of people in the, in the chat. Vladimir, Dev, Jandrea. If you have any questions, put them into the Q&A section of the chat, please. Excellent. So I'm just going to watch the market out of one eye here. So we're getting ready to go live. And uh, what am I going to do? No, no, no. I'm just kind of watching it, you know, just seeing what's going on today. Uh, you know, the U.S. is going to open up pretty quick here. So uh, I think we'll just get started. Excellent. Fantastic. Let me just start with the slides here. All right. So welcome. Derbit Live. Interesting, interesting show today. We've had a lot of questions uh, through different channels uh, where we chat with people or students, things like that, about um, about what happened. Some people really got hurt by that by that move. You know, ten percent. Well, you know, top to bottom was bigger than ten percent, and uh, that sucks. That sucks. And you know, for the most part, people got hurt because they're over leveraged, and you knew a purge was coming. Um, you know, the market doesn't just let everybody get on board and, and, and the train leaves the station. Doesn't work that way. They're always going to hunt for those stops. They're always going to hunt, and uh, we're going to get into this a little bit more. But before we get started here, um, this is the agenda for today. Take a little bit of a market analysis. We'll take a look at some charts. We'll talk a little bit about what happened this week and what we expect going forward. We're going to talk about this Bitcoin flash crash. Uh, and it wasn't just Bitcoin. Of course, people got got beaten up pretty good on some altcoins, uh, ETH, whatever. But uh, Bitcoin flash crash, how to survive and prosper. Our accounts are back at highs. I sure hope yours are too. And we're going to tell you how we did that. Uh, and then we're going to uh, we're going to do a little bit of live trading. So of course we set up this a little account. Uh, we set up uh, last week. We just uh, entered our first trades last week in this account. I think it was just over five thousand bucks. We we put in there maybe fifty two hundred something like that. And uh, we're going to put some more trades on. We're starting slow with that account. We're just slowly going to build it up. We're going to build up a book. There's no need to go crazy. And we have our parameters. We have our goals. We're going to talk about our goals and how many basis points per day we're going to be trying to earn through that account. But before I get started on that, I just want to introduce us for those new people. We're the Rogue Traders. Check us out, roguetrader.academy. And for those people who want to join Silver Level or, level or higher, we've got our weekly Ask me anything call we do with our members. We've got interactive live trading and alerts. We chat with people during the day and post our discretionary trades in there. Uh, access to our educational courses and content, as well as daily live streams. You can check us out every day on Patreon. Well, every weekday. Uh, we don't usually do weekends because there's not much happening on weekends anymore with this ETF uh, news out there. So without further ado, let me go ahead and I'll stop this. We're going to jump over the charts and we'll take a look at the shenanigans, absolute shenanigans that happened this week. You can see I've got this big, big old trend line here, and this is an ETH. ETH is a little bit more uh, tame, I suppose, when it comes to the trend line. So those people trading ETH, hey, I'd expect a little bit of pullback along this trend line, but it's just going to keep going up. ETH day is going to come. We talked about this last week. It's only a matter of time before it goes for ETF approval. But you can see it had a, had a big liquidation candle there. Now, I don't know the size liquidation on ETH. I only know Bitcoin. And that's that's the big one. That's the main show. There was over $1 billion of liquidations on that one candle. This final purge really hooped a lot of people. I don't know what the number is industry-wide. What was lost in altcoins? What was lost in ETH? I have no idea. But Bitcoin hurt a lot of people. Again, these are over-leveraged long perpetual futures contracts they're going to hunt you out they're going to hunt you out they're not going to let you in so that sucks for those people who are who are over leveraged but you know when i when i had this original um line in here we plunged right through but it's interesting to see that we've crawled back up basically on on the trend line now this isn't uh 
you know, super precise technical analysis, but everything kind of reverts, right? So we expect things to kind of gravitate back to that trend line at some point or another. Now, I think the important thing to talk about here is how, how to survive and how to prosper from these things. We don't know when they're coming. One thing I'll point out to start is, look, from down here, all the way, oops, how come my little thing's not working? You know what, what, 30%. That's a 30% gain since end of February? Are you kidding me? Ridiculous. So we talk about this pullback, you know, let's say from the very top where it wicked up here to a new high and really screwed some people because they had to trigger, trigger, trigger long orders, right? To the very bottom, we're talking about 14%, 13 14%. In the big picture, in a quick flash, against a 30% move that's happened very quickly, it's not really that surprising or that big of a deal. We get about a 10% move on average every 90 days. So it really isn't that unexpected. And this is why you've got to be prepared for this. You've got, especially in this environment, you knew something had to be coming. You know, it could be 120 grand in a two or, or two or three months from now, but there's going to be pullbacks and they're going to be fast, sharp, and they're going to be violent and the market's going to disappear. Now, if you were trading during that time, which I was, a lot of strikes, a lot of expiries, there is no market. The market would disappear for a few minutes. A few people would trickle back in, would disappear. You can't count on getting out of positions when these events happen. You have to be prepared beforehand. It's like an ounce of prevent, uh, prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's the most applicable thing here in this market. So and it's worth saying that <clears throat> as the as the market um, relentlessly rises, as it has been doing, particularly if you're, you're short calls, you get kind of sucked into being longer and longer and longer, and you're hedging harder and harder and harder with futures. And the temptation is to, is to in the end say, "Screw it, we're just going to go long and super long." Um, and even if you, um, and some people just do that anyway, but it's just part of the trading style, right? <laughs> just, uh, you know, yeah, yeah go, going to the moon. Um, and the thing is that market professionals know this and they look at all the metrics and they look at how much leverage is in, is in the system and they can fairly accurately compute how much they have to sell in order to flush everybody out. Um, and these are unregulated markets, so it's a, it's a shark pit. Um, so you have to protect your downside. Absolutely, yeah. have to, because you, you know you, you're going to get flushed, right? So let's talk quickly about how we're preventing getting liquidation, how we're able to survive and possibly even make money off these. Now, our intention when we're trading isn't to make money off of a, a flush down, unless we, we think the market's going to head down that maybe we would. But we were long this whole way up, and we still are. You know, we still think that, hey, you know, long term, nothing has changed for us. And I said that to our members during this crash. I said, look, nothing has changed. This is just a purge candle. We're still going to be oriented long. We just have to survive these move downs. What do we do? Well, we always talk about cover your positions. You know that we're selling puts all the time because we want to accumulate more Bitcoin. We sell them as spreads. We always have protection in place, sometimes double coverage. If we sell calls, we're doing it selectively. We're not doing it as a matter of, hey, every three days we're selling a call. We're, we're not doing anything systematic when it comes to selling calls in this particular market because the, the danger is still to the upside. We know the ETF inflows are there. We know the amount of Bitcoins that are mined every day. It's about 10x demand to supply. When the halving comes, that's going to get halved, right? So we have to respect the market and it could make significant upside moves. There could be liquidity issues. There could be all kinds of things. It's a market and it can happen, right? Especially in crypto. So we're being very selective about when and where we're selling calls. If the market makes a 20% move very quickly, it's going to take a breather at some point. I'm happy to then maybe jump in and sell a 15 or a $20 call, but I'm going to do it as a spread again. And the other thing, when we sell these spreads, let's say put spreads, because that's what we're most commonly doing, if we can get double coverage, we do. Plus, we're buying wing protection, short-dated 
wing protection. Now, we do buy some long dated protection as well because uh, sometimes we need to control that Vega risk. The final thing we do is we leave our shrapnel in place. And Richard's going to, we'll show you that in a second. Basically, if if I sell a put spread and it expires tomorrow and I've got a, a, an order in to buy that back for cheap, and I think we have an example we can show you, we buy it back great. We leave the long put in place. We call that shrapnel. And it ends up building, building, building over all these expires. They're smeared out everywhere. That cushion, again, an ounce of pre- pre- prevention. Because when it, when the market's crashing, if you need to buy a protection at that point, you know you're going to be paying through the nose for it, right? So these are the little things that we do every day as habits, day in, day out. We build these cushions and we build that protection so we're not getting ourselves into margin problem. Because let's face it, if the market makes a big move down and a big back, big move back up, what's, what's your biggest enemy? Well, margin, running out of margin, right? And getting liquidated. Right, so that's what we're trying to prevent, and that's what we're trying to uh, stay alive. Now, if the market stayed down, let's say you know the market went down to sixty-two and just kind of hovered there for a while. For us, it's, you know, sure, sure, maybe maybe our our, our equity uh, is a bit lower at the time, but that will all adjust because we're not having to move many positions. We'll get that intrinsic value back. We're not being having to dump stuff, dump stuff just to clear up margin. Right. That's where it hurts. And in fact, I think I only adjusted two positions in that entire dump, even though I was primarily selling puts. So I don't know, Richard, if you want to quickly share your screen, we can uh, kind of show get some into some live trading. We go into a little bit deeper on these concepts. Yeah. Let's uh, so look inside the screen. Um, that one. Yeah. So here we go. Um, so this account is our, um, the real Richard account is us. We're, we're going to simulate mining Bitcoin using options and we're doing this as part of our trading series for Deribit. So we don't want to go to the trouble of investing in Bitcoin miners um, and buying electricity. We're just going to use uh, options to do the same job. Um, Vladimir says it's not, not visible. Maybe it's too small. Okay. Ah, okay. So it's now good. Excellent. Okay. And hopefully this is big enough. So here we are on the 8th of March, um, 2024. And part of and our strategy here is actually very extremely simple. We're just going to sell put spreads, and we're going to try and sell put spreads with a net premium that earns us net eight, eleven basis points per day. And I'll show you why in a minute. Um, so here is evidence of a historic put spread because the short leg is no longer here. But if I show you the put spread here, so we we sold the fifty two, sixty two five hundred, and we bought the fifty eight thousand. Um, and uh, at the time, we sold that for oh, these screens are enormous, aren't they? Uh, yeah, so Vladimir's too big. This uh, is too big. We, we can't satisfy anybody. Oh my I, gosh, I get that a lot. Um, <laughs> okay, so that that spread the sixty two five hundred. I sold I sold the short leg for one twenty five basis points of of a bitcoin, and the the cover I I paid twenty six. So we received net ninety nine minus fees. Um, um, and I think we sold that when it was about a week away, something like yeah. that. Well, it was um, last week during last Derbit Live, wasn't it? Oh, it was. Or, okay. or, well, maybe. Oh, uh, no, I did a, I did a trade the other day. Um, I, I, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, so matter. the thing is that, um, so that was the one we put on, but there was already cover here at 50,000. And that was because previously we had sold the 55,000 and covered it with the, with the 50,000. But we put in a buy order to... To a closing order, to a reduce order, to get the fifty-five thousand back, and of course, as the market moved up and down, vols went up and down. Eventually, we got we got filled. So I think I paid about I don't know ten or nine or eight or something to get that position back. So that was locked in profit. And I think at the time, the fifty thousand put was worth about I don't know maybe five or six basis points. Anyway, we uh, we uh, maybe two or three, whatever. And so rather than <clears throat> Excuse me. Rather than chase every scrap scrap of, of profit, we t- we always take the view that having <clears throat> long cover lying around is is more valuable than than not, particularly if it's been already been paid for. Um, so <clears throat> we left it, we just left it there, um, and so this um, spread now has double cover. Now that covers a long way away, but in the case of a major disaster, 
um, <clears throat> and maybe not overnight because the follow effects aren't, aren't huge, but maybe imagine that a week away or a month away, that second bit of cover could become quite valuable in, in the case of a sudden skew goes to the puts and fall goes up and markets plummeting. Um, and that can be the kind of thing that can save you from being liquidated and keep you in the game um, ready for the bounce. <clears throat> now, um, this this was the, this was only a week uh, a week out, um, but we are also trading on the 29th of March. So we've got we've got a uh, put spread here on the 29th of March. And imagine uh, that well, this is a fairly recent account. We only started trading it last week, right? But imagine that we've been trading this account all through the rally, all the way up from 30k, or all the way up from uh, whatever it was 40 to where we are. Um, we'd have been chasing the market up by selling put spreads, buying them back, selling put spreads, buying them back, and so on. And actually, we'd end up with maybe four or five of these uh, 0 0.1 um, uh, long worthless puts. We'd never never, buy, never sell them, right? We, because these are just worth gold dust to us if there is some kind of crazy disaster. Um, gives us time to, 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 to think. And the, the, yeah, the I, couple I, of basis points we'd make is pointless, right? Yeah, and I was just going to point out too, Richard, that that you know if we have this you know a fifty thousand put long put that expires you know next week, I mean the chances of it going there are are almost zero. But if the market takes a ten percent drop down, you have to realize the margin benefits those give mm. us as well. They yeah. keep us from getting liquidated. Yeah, uh, because you suddenly find that that this would no longer be eighty volt; it would be a hundred volt, and mm. um, the price would be I don't know ten percent closer to the money. So it's being priced as a 16%, so it's actually now 129, but with more vols, so it's more like 150. So suddenly it becomes valuable. And it, and even though overall you're still taking a, a net PL hit, nowhere near as bad as it would be if you were naked, and nowhere near as much margin being used. I mean, it's astonishing the amount of margin that, that saves you. And it lets you trade in bigger size. So actually, we're trading this account, it has only a clutter of 0 0.08 Bitcoin. 8.5 and we're trading in size 0.1 um, and so we're actually over trading this account but using only what 20% margin and all, almost all of that margin use is coming from the fact we're massively over trading out at, at uh, 15th of March so we, our trading strategy really for the next two weeks is to do nothing at all on this account um, and it will and if barring a massive move down a sustained move down it will pay us what we what we want um, shall we move on to why why we've chosen 11 basis points? Yeah, right. let's talk about that. Let's talk about beating the miners. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so we call this our sort of Bitcoin mining strategy. So we are, you know, basically um, a miner bets that uh, hash uh, difficulty is not going to out outweigh his cost of mining. Um, uh, and the, and there are two risks he runs. One is, the, well, most multiple risks he runs. Uh, um, the cost of power goes up. The difficulty goes up, um, the price of Bitcoin goes down. There are all kinds of reasons why he could lose money. So our, our, our only concern is, is it does never go down, right? So actually already we've got far less stress than a miner. Um, we've made zero investment. All we've done is put some Bitcoins on the platform. So we're choosing strikes where, 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 where we're saying, if, if the market goes down to this strike, are we happy to sit and roll that position? Are we happy to sit and be short 59,000 calls all year long? And I think for us right now, the answer is yes. We, we, we're fairly confident. But um, whereas 59,000 is not necessarily a flaw, um, we, uh, it, it's, it's a level that we are certain we'll see again uh, at some point in the year. Um, so we're prepared to, to run that risk. Um, and now we're just looking to select strikes where we can yield on average 11 basis points a day. Why? Here's my little... Hong Kong book of spreadsheet I prepared earlier. Um, any of you, some of you of a certain age will get the reference. Um, <clears throat> uh, so if we make one, this this is a table of your, the return you get from compounding your returns. So if you make one basis point per day, that's one hundredth of a percent per day, and you reinvest your profits every day uh, over 365 days, um, you will actually make 3.72%, which is about what you'll get on a callable deposit in a bank today after taxes. Um, if you make two basis points per day, you will actually end up 
yielding 7.57% per year, which is what you're going to get on if you lend money to Avis rent a car uh, and, and, and then you bond issue, high risk bond issue. Um, if you choose 11 basis points a day, you are going to make 49.37% per year, uh, assuming you can realize it, which outperforms just about every of the top three hedge funds. Um, uh, and if you make 19 basis points a day, you will make 100% a year. So in a market that isn't trending violently and isn't quite as violent as Bitcoin, one might choose to sell call spreads and put spreads, for example, and seek to achieve 20 basis points a day on average and seek to double their money. Uh, we are in a rapidly rising market, so we have a very strong directional view, so we're not looking to risk any Bitcoins by selling calls on these accounts at the moment. Um, and of course, uh, you know, at 40 basis points a day, the, by the magic of compounding, you're earning 329% per year. So f our view is that, um, so comparing ourselves to a Bitcoin miner, a uh, Bitcoin miner is going to go and spend, what, $20,000 on, on the mining rig. He's going to spend money on cooling, housing, hooking up a electricity supply, and then he's going to pay power all year long. And if he's really good, if he's really good, and he gets the right discounts and pays the right amount for his power, he will earn uh, break even in nine months. Um, we, we, as long as we're making money, we break even on day one. And after a year, we aim to be 50% uh, in profit. Um, uh, a Bitcoin miner might be 30% in profit by that time, if he's lucky. If he, if his if the halving hasn't killed him, or the electricity price hasn't killed him, or the technology is not no longer out of date, and so on. Right? Hmm. Hmm. So that's where the eleven base points a day comes from. Uh, so we uh, can attempt to fifty percent a year. Yeah. yeah so we, so we, we we think that that for a start, Bitcoin probably will continue to go up, and. Uh, and in fact, I've just done a, done a, a video about that, which you, you'll be able to find on our website quite soon. Uh, I'm being interviewed by, by Olga, uh, one of our partners, as to why I've completely changed my view on Bitcoin um, mm -hmm. and actually why it's, it, it represents a threat to society, which is quite interesting. It occurred to me during, mm -hmm. the, during the interview. Um, on our, it'll be on our YouTube channel, not, uh, not on our website. But yeah, 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 yeah sorry. Um, yeah. And... Um, 50% a year should be more than enough for anybody because um, if we were to change this to um, uh, say two years, um, then your return is now 123%. And if Bitcoin's done a 10X and you've also doubled your Bitcoin, you've done a 20X. Um, and if you're uh, if, uh, and over four years, and uh, Michael Saylor says that all investment horizons should be at least four years, then you're talking about 400%. Um, uh, on your initial investment, which uh, no matter how little Bitcoin you start with, should be enough to yeah. do something useful like pay off your mortgage or your student loan or something like that. Right? And that's a good point. We had a conversation with a, a young man the other day who wanted to invest more in altcoins because he's worried about the price of Bitcoin. And you were like, look, if you've got $500 or $5,000, doesn't matter what it's in, but look at this long term horizon. Are these are these altcoins going to be around? Is Bitcoin going to be around? What are the odds? And look at the expected or 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 potential growth on each year. Probably better being in Bitcoin. I know there's an allure out there for you know putting money in these sub penny uh, uh, altcoins, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I hope you do and you make some money, but but just you know make sure you allocate some. To, to Bitcoin as well. I think that's a smart thing to do. Uh, okay, we're, we're almost out of time. Uh, Vladimir, uh, sorry, he says, sorry, I can't understand. Wings worth nothing faster than the... Actually, you can stop sharing your screen if you want, uh, Richard. Sorry. Unless you're, are you going to do something else with that uh, spreadsheet? Uh, nope. Okay. Um, okay. So you, you keep, so yeah, we, we, we talk about the, the risk leg and, and the cover and then also the wings. So we like to buy... Um, <clears throat> we like to buy... Uh, really super cheap, far out of the money, calls and puts. Um, and in fact, we, today we were considering selling a put spread and buying a call with the proceeds of that. Um, mm. But we actually couldn't find value. There's too much implied vol in the calls at the moment for us yeah. to make that make that safe. So so we're not going to be greedy. Um, 
we're going to wait for there to be a Volk rush. Maybe after, maybe after the weekend, who knows, right? Depends yeah. on how big the inflows are today. Um, and um, But if we've ever had cover in place, then we'd like to leave it there. So we, we make our profits on the risk leg, i.e. the short leg. And once we've bought that back, we'd like to leave the cover in, no matter what else we're doing, because you just never know when you might need it. And, um, and Vladimir, to your question, says the wings are worth nothing, uh, so price should go extremely high to be able to buy back a leg. Well, well, no. I mean, if we, if we sell something two weeks out, if the price doesn't move, you know, eventually it's, you know, these are these are out of the money calls or puts that we're selling. Um, right. Eventually, they're going to expire worthlessly. So, um, so this, the 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 price doesn't need to spike on the other direction. The the um, the they're ultimately there because we are running a long strategy and we want to be protected in case there is a huge move down. And so as this book matures, it'll build up more and more shrapnel on the downside, particularly as yeah. it trends up, right? Which then means yeah. that every time there is a big leg down, all that shrapnel suddenly becomes worth something and it protects us um, and allows us to actually, it would allow, in this book, it would allow us to make a, make a decision to actually buy a future and get long to get mm -hmm. the bounce. So it yeah. gives us all the, choices in the world and we don't want to give up our bitcoin because we are long-term bullish so we'd rather do things that will accumulate us bitcoins uh versus give them up uh david says buying altcoins to find the next bitcoin in returns is the biggest noob trap in this space <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. true but but then again we, we probably all have uh, plenty of friends out there uh, I, in fact i talked to a guy last night um on skype and Put a thousand bucks into something you know, it's worth 115 a month later. <laughs> I don't know which I don't know which coin it is. If it was, I probably wouldn't say it anyways, because uh, I'm not out here to, to shill uh, for all coins. And, and yes, but but it's a big casino, right? It's just, it's no different than when I started trading way back in the day. I remember in Vancouver they had the Vancouver Stock Exchange. It was all for mining stocks, all these sub penny mining exploratory stocks and people would go they have like ten thousand bucks and they just put a little bit on each just it's like going to the roulette wheel right hmm. you, you 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 cover you cover the squares and eventually one hopefully hits and that's sort of the same thing with a lot of altcoins now i that's, realize we're we're and it's really important you, you have to yeah. so i'm going to go over time because this is so important sorry guys um the purpose of shit coins is to transfer money from your pocket into the pockets of VCs, right? There's no other reason for them, none. Uh, uh, in the same way that the purpose of casino chips is to transfer money from your pocket to the casino. Um, for many stocks, the purpose of the stock is to transfer money from you to investment bankers and and uh, professional traders who do this for a living. I think we've been handed a once in a generation exception in in terms of bitcoin um mm. that the, it's very much the, the fox being let into the hen coop the the established system of money has endorsed bitcoin and absorbed it into etfs being traded on the on wall street um uh i think they will come to regret doing that i think it will have far-reaching consequences for global society and the value of money um, which I go into in detail uh, in my interview, which you'll see uh, at some point. Uh, Clayton, I know you wanted to ask a question. Please just drop your question into the Q&A section, if you don't mind. Another question here from Dennis. I, I, I thought he did. Oh, uh, oh maybe we, we do already cover that one. Uh, no, I think he must, did, he must have pulled it. Oh, he, he might have, yeah. Okay. Dennis says... As oh, no, here, the, here we go. Also, sorry. Yeah, sorry. What? Sorry, ignore me. Okay. It, well, I usually do. As a vol seller, where do you see good value for the long side of the trade? We we try and spend about thirty percent, maybe twenty five to thirty percent of the premium we've pulled in. Um, something something. It's a rule of thumb, right? But um, something like that. You, you've, got, you've got to leave enough of a gap to make it worthwhile selling the risk. At the same time, you don't leave, want the gap between the puts and the, mm -hmm. the long and short to be so big that you're going to take a huge loss before you get protected. Mm -hmm. um, something like 10% in the current market seems to be about workable. Um, something like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think Andre is, uh, Andre is giving you a hard time here, Richard. He says, finally, you recognize the real game with Bitcoin. So 
Well, I think, you got on board? I think uh, I, I, I've been doing some serious thinking about this, and I think the the I think the consequences of this actually are disastrous for the for everyone in the world. Um, oh boy, it's going to end up in, in uh, mass murder and, and chaos. But um, oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 and, and, this, I, and this is all on the YouTube video that we're putting on our, on yeah, our yeah. channel. Yeah. Oh boy, yeah. this this is on the Rogue Trader Academy YouTube channel, by the way. It's so. I think it's, yeah, I'll, I'll just prepping it right now, so it'll be it'll appear in the next day or so. But we don't want to put that on the Darabit channel. They'll be like, "What the heck, guys?" No, I mean, so, uh, the long, long and short of it, I think, is that you want you definitely want to be on, in on this rally, probably for the yeah. next two at least two years. You're definitely going to want to know when to get off, and you're also going to have to make a sign that you wear around your neck saying, "I have no Bitcoin." <laughs> 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 okay. All right. Well, as we're talking, the U.S. has opened up, and I see they're pushing the price up a little bit. Interesting. Not, not a big deal, but uh, we'll see what happens. So uh, interesting to see if we if we just pick up where we left off before this big crash and continue to pierce new highs. We'll see what happens this week. Um, that's it for, for time. I don't think – oh, hang on. we got one more question here. Uh, uh, question from Willem. Currently, the Bitcoin uh, vol index IV percentile is now 98.9. Is this high number still statistically relevant? Is it indicating a danger zone? It's for uh, no, it, well, all it's indicating is that vol has been really low for the past year. Yeah, I think about 60, if I'm not mistaken, was sort of the average from the past. Yeah, but we're, we're, even then, we're, we're in exceptional times. Um, we are. Uh, uh, and in fact, so that you're looking at default, that's just like, like the average at the money, well, average vol at the money, roughly yeah. one month out. But actually, if you look at the skew, I mean, we're skewed 10 vols up uh, between yeah. equivalent puts and calls, right? So, and and the smile is like 8%. So uh, it's it's um, very, very strongly skewed towards continuous upside movement. Yeah, and I see it's rising right now too. Uh, uh, one one last question here from Willem. Going back two years, vol has been a lot higher. You are correct. Yeah, I mean, we were, I remember when it was 120. Uh, we, we get these spikes up. Now, the important thing to remember is if something happens in Bitcoin, there's some news, and vol does go to 120, the market can't sustain that. It might do it for a few hours. It might do it for a few days. Yeah. Maybe even a week. It can't sustain it. Yeah, that, 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 so your that, job that, is that, to survive. That, yeah, that will that will liquidate um, pretty yeah. much anyone who's short yeah. unless they're covered. Yeah, and, and, and we'll, we'll we'll salivate to to sell that, but you got to survive. You got to have the margin in order to to stay alive, then to realize to pull that intrinsic in. So, and if you trick. and if you have um, yeah, and if actually, and if you're double or triple covered in those scenarios, well, yes. you, you know, you, it's yeah. pitching, right? Keep that shrapnel in place. And when you can, put on double coverage, even on the call side, on, especially on the call side right now, simply because the call side is the danger side. The upside is the danger side. And that's what the market's telling us. Yeah, uh, vol is, no, vol isn't, we're, we're, vol isn't sorry, particularly ahead. high, right? Look, look at historic vol. Um, it's not particularly no. high. I mean, th those big spikes are things like um, UST, Terra Luna, FTX. Those were big events, yes, big events. Yeah. Yeah. So, Will, no, I, we don't say 120 kills everything. We're, we're you know, it's it's going to it's going to hurt if we've sold. It's going to hurt anything we've already sold. But we're going to jump on and sell more of it. The point is, is to stay alive. So that when the vol drops back to to 110, 100, 90, 80, we pull in all that intrinsic value. So uh, that's why we, we try to you know run margin no higher than 30 uh, percent if we can. Always have coverage in place, double coverage when possible, and leave the shrapnel in place, those little bits left over from your spreads. Leave the long sides in because the, I can't count the amount of times they've saved our ass in terms of margin. And on a big move, they're going to be very, very valuable. So we, ha we, have, a, that's, we have a dear friend who's now retired, young, retired young, right, in his 40s. He retired. He was a market maker, built his own firm, and he made all his money by being short one and long three um, pretty much. Oh, we're gapping high, apparently. Yeah, he, he did a lot of back spreads as a, as a floor trader. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, okay. that's it. We're, we're out of time. I think we're out of questions. So, was there one last thing you wanted to talk about, Richard? Uh, nope, just markets pushing up. That's all. Uh, good no, luck out there, guys. Just, 
Yeah, it's always the U.S. Open when we have our call. So it's a, it's kind of an, always an interesting time. So anyways, thanks a lot for joining us. I hope that you found this valuable. I hope that you were able to survive uh, and, and prosper from geez, it's something like a Vulcan, right? No, this live long and prosper. From that last move down, expect them. Expect them, especially as we get increased volatility, especially as we if we continue to make big moves up. Expect 5% candles, even 10% candles, maybe even more. Right. We might even see some. You know, imagine if Bitcoin gaps up to eighty thousand all of a sudden. You know, in in twelve minutes, don't ex- be surprised by a twenty percent pullback. Don't be surprised. Be prepared for it. Have that cover in place. Don't leave yourself naked, and you should be able to survive just fine. And just keep your account rolling up to uh, you know new highs all the time. So that's it for today. Uh, be sure to check us out at RogueTrader.academy. You can check out the recording of this video on the Deribit. YouTube channel, and of course, on the Rogue Trader Academy YouTube channel. And we will see you next week. Hey, and thanks for watching this episode of Darabit Live. If you'd like to learn more, talk, and trade along with us, then check out roguetrader.academy, where we offer an incredibly unique educational and trading experience. There is no other service like this out there, period. Where else can you not only learn, but interact daily with professional fund traders, with each of us having over 20 years of experience. And for those who just want to watch our daily live stream, you can do so via the links below. So if you want to peek behind the curtains and understand the strategies that we've developed since we started trading options in the 1990s and take your understanding and skills to the next level, then join now and we'll see you on the inside.